Is Israel spraying Palestinian homes with raw sewage using riot control vehicles? No, but never let the truth interfere with a good story. First, let me show you the video that I pulled off of TikTok. This video implies that an Israeli riot control vehicle is spraying down Palestinian homes with raw sewage. So I'm going to get into why this wasn't raw sewage, but first, uh, you know how we all have that aunt or uncle who refuses to listen to reason? Well, this holiday season, you can give them the gift of ground news. Go to ground.news slash Ryan McBeth and subscribe through my link and get 40% off the Vantage plan for this month only. That's the same plan that I have. I actually paid for a Ground News Vantage account. They do not give this to me for free. It's an actual tool that I use. And as part of my morning routine, I browse ground news while I'm drinking my morning coffee. Now, I tend to bias as a centrist. Imagine that. So what's kind of neat is that ground news will actually give me a blind spot report to let me know about stories on the fringes that I may, may have missed. Uh, here's a good example. You know how people said that 40 babies were murdered by Kusam on October 7th? Well, that was barely covered by the left. And then there was a strike that killed 19 members of the same family in a Gaza refugee camp, and that received absolutely zero coverage at all from the right. So who are we supposed to believe? Well, luckily, Ground News gives you both the factuality rating and the ownership of the publication. I mean, look at this. The South China Morning Post. It's owned by the Alibaba Group, and it's of mixed factuality. Imagine that. So go to ground.news slash Ryan McBeth and subscribe through my link to get 40% off a Vantage plan for this month only. Get a subscription to that crazy aunt before she comes to Thanksgiving dinner. Heaven knows she needs it. All right, so this particular video that I just showed you has all the makings of DIP, or deceptive imagery persuasion. DIP is the practice of using deceptive imagery to further propaganda or misinformation. This is typically done using an out-of-context image or an image with an out-of-context quote. The beauty of the practice is that the target usually believes that they came to a conclusion by themselves. Now, a good way of detecting DIP, or really almost any kind of misinformation, is how it makes you feel. If watching that video makes you feel emotional, that might be a good indicator that it's misinformation. If you take a look at the surface level of this video, it, it kind of looks correct. I mean, you see a truck, there's Hebrew characters on it. It's spraying something that does look kind of dirty. But there are some things that smell funny, so to speak, in the video. The first is that this is a yellow license plate, and that is typically only found on Israeli civilian vehicles. Palestinian license plates in the West Bank typically have green text and a white background. Now, I found one article that claimed this was in Jerusalem, so this might be a Palestinian neighborhood in Jerusalem, so I could see why an ethnic Palestinian might have an Israeli license plate because they live in East Jerusalem. But this video claims that this was done in the West Bank, is that this video was happening in the West Bank. So the license plate is kind of your first clue that something is off. Now, more, a little bit more about license plates here. Um, Israeli police vehicles have red license plates. This truck has a red license plate. This is the standard license plate for Israeli police. So I think it is safe to say that this is an Israeli police vehicle. It's not doing any kind of street cleaning. Now, let's talk about the spraying of human waste. The one thing that all of these videos have in common is the, is the phrase spraying sewage water. Now, at first glance, it doesn't seem like this would make a lot of sense. I mean, all sorts of nasty diseases can be caused by sewage water. And as we saw during the pandemic, diseases don't respect international borders, all right? Nobody wins from a cholera outbreak in a Palestinian neighborhood, right? Now, because I'm Ryan Macbeth and I freaking do stuff like this, I actually looked into the process of sewage treatment because you, you gotta get the sewage from somewhere before you put it in a truck, right? So odds are you'd get it from a sewage treatment plant. Now, 
There's basically six steps to sewage treatment, uh, sometimes seven, but that, that's beyond the scope of this video. Uh, there's Number one is screening. That's where you eliminate debris like sticks and plastic, mainly by using screens. Uh, then step two is primary treatment, where heavy solids, known as sludge, settle at the bottom, and liquids, known as effluent, settle at the top. Then there's secondary treatment, where the effluent is subject to microorganisms that break down organic pollutants. The fourth step is uh, disinfection, where the effluent is passed through ultraviolet light, and sometimes bleach might be added as well. Uh, the fifth step is just for the sludge, and that's treated by more bacteria. Sometimes it's dried out and it might actually be sold as fertilizer. And finally, the effluent is uh, disposed into a river or a lake or reused as gray water. Uh, when I was in Egypt, gray water was actually used to water plants. So uh, it, 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 it's theoretically possible that in the primary treatment phase, um, maybe, but you could take that effluent and pump that into trucks. You, you probably wouldn't use it during the secondary treatment phase because then you're losing money on the bacteria that you've added to treat the effluent, right? So odds are, if you were going to do this, it would be in that, in that uh, primary treatment phase or step two. Uh, but like I said, if you spray around raw sewage, it's going to cause disease and diseases don't respect national or neighborhood borders. And as far as I can tell, there have been no uh, outbreaks of sewage related diseases in the Palestinian territories. So using ICD-203, the standard for probability in the intelligence community, I would consider that the use of effluent in these trucks, almost no chance. This Instagram user is lying to you. Now, luckily, uh, the same article that said this video happened in East Jerusalem also said what this stuff was. It's called skunk water or skunk. And just by reading about it, yeah, it's as, as bad as it sounds. Water cannons as a form of riot control were used in the 1930s, first by Germany. And uh, of course, we've all seen water cannons used against uh, demonstrators during the American Civil Rights Movement in the 1960s. Now, if you want to look at water cannons and riot control from a technical level, water cannons are a less lethal device. Certainly less lethal than using riot control rounds such as rubber buckshot or, or stingers. And it's cheap. It's water. I mean, sometimes uh, you might add marker dyes. China likes to do that to identify people later for arrest. But for the most part, uh, they just, just water is used. And people don't like being wet with all their clothes on. This works even better when it's really cold outside and you spray people down. But the problem is that if you're shooting water cannons directly at somebody, you're opening them up to all sorts of secondary injuries. Because that water is coming out of the hose at 15 bar or 220 PSI. So it's like getting hit by Fred Warner. You're going down hard, you're gonna get scrapes at the least, broken bones or a concussion, or maybe even death if you, if you hit your head at the worst. So back in 2008, an Israeli company called OdorTech developed this product as sort of like an odor crowd control. You spray it over the top of people and it smells like raw sewage. And it stays with you for a couple of days. And supposedly it's so bad that it makes people want to leave. And that's the kind of thing that you want in a riot control situation. You want people to go home and you want to use as little force as possible to, to get them to go home. Now Israel has made some overseas sales. It's sold by Mistral in the US as a non-lethal deterrent. So what is this stuff? What is skunk? Well, I actually found the material safety data sheet because again, I'm Ryan Macbeth and I do stuff like this. So uh, in the US, OSHA or the Occupational Safety and Health Administration is a government agency that deals with worker safety. And OSHA requires that workers who are exposed to chemicals have to have access to a data sheet telling them what chemicals are in their products at work. So we don't have to tell a rioter what's in the product we're using against them, but we have to tell the police who are using it because they could suffer a workplace injury. And if you wanna read the material safety data sheet, it's on my Substack for members. Um, but basically it's a mix of water, yeast, and baking soda. It works by the principle at the pH level of sodium bicarbonate, the yeast synthesize some amino acids causing heavy odor. And it's billed as environmentally friendly. So uh, that's skunk water. It's skunk water, it is not raw sewage. Now, some of the things that people imply is that Israel uses skunk water as a punitive measure. And you often see this video as an illustration of that. 
Now, I don't know what's going on in that video, uh, but I don't see any rioters, so I can't explain why that truck is spraying some kind of substance. That being said, the police in Jerusalem have used skunk water against Israelis as well. This picture from an Israeli newspaper called Haaretz shows that uh, skunk water is being used against right-wing protesters. So Israel does use this against Israeli citizens. So is Israel using sewage water against protesters? Well, I think we covered that. No, this particular Instagram user is either misinformed or lying to you, but either way, they are being deceptive. And this is a classic case of dip or deceptive imagery persuasion. Uh, Israel is using skunk water against protesters, both Israeli and Palestinian. Is Israel using it as a punitive measure? I can't say for certain. Based on, on the footage I've seen, I cannot say that for certain. But I will tell you what doesn't stink. Uh, my A Very NORAD Christmas sweater from Bunker Branding. It features an American F-15 and a Canadian CF-18 guarding Santa on his Christmas Eve ride. You can get that at Bunker Branding and uh, help support the channel. You can also buy a Substack membership for five bucks where you can get access to all of my Intel PowerPoints and maps. It's really helpful when your first sergeant asks you to do hip pocket training. You can pull that down, you get everything you need right there. You can also send someone a Christmas greeting through uh, Cameo. I love doing that stuff. And thank you guys so much for watching. In a world where fashion meets firepower, where style becomes strategy, it's time to gear up for the ultimate mission with Bunker Branding. Introducing the Rock Out With Your Chalk Out t-shirt, a tribute to the fearless air of cavalry. Feel the adrenaline rush as you don the pride of the skies. For those of you who dare from the air, precision and power unite when you think outside the bomb. And don't miss our Live Laugh Launch t-shirts for Patriot and High Mars, because sometimes defending freedom means bringing the thunder. Finally, for the true defender of the seas, we present Department of the Boat People. Sail with honor and show your allegiance to the world's mightiest maritime force. With these shirts, hoodies, and stickers, along with the tow missile, landmines, and drone warfare. These aren't just shirts, they're statements. They're your way of saying I stand for strength, unity, and style. Get yours at Bunker Branding today.